What's going on YouTube? It's Ribs from Ribs Doing Film Things. How we doing? So today we're gonna talk about my favorite medium format SLR camera, and that is the Bronica ETRS. The ETS was a model that was released in the late 70s and continued to be made during the 80s. It is basically a camera that competes with Hasselblad's and Mamiya's. These cameras are fully modular and allow you to mix and match various components on the actual camera itself. I've had my ETRS now for over a year and I absolutely love it. I shoot lots of portraits in studio and outside of the studio and this camera seems to have been made for that. It shoots in a 6x4-5 ratio and gets you 15 images per 120 roll. On top of that, it's not very heavy and it's just very, very comfortable in the hands, no matter how you hold it and from what angle you're shooting. Prices seem to have crept up just a bit nowadays. I paid 250 euro for mine, but now I see them on eBay for about 300 euro or higher. The good news is there's tons of copies out there, most of them coming from Japan, and they all seem to be in really, really good condition as well. If you find a local one, that's even better for you so you can avoid the import charges. So a couple odds and ends about this camera. The first thing is that it's a leaf shutter camera, meaning that the shutter is actually in the lens. This is fantastic if you shoot portraits in the studio because then you can sync your flash at any speed. Additionally, this camera does require a battery to operate. However, if you don't have a battery in the camera, you can still shoot at 1 500th of a second. That's useful for many things, especially if it's bright and sunny outside, but of course, it has its limits. All the film backs for this camera use dark slides. The dark slide will protect your film back and the film inside. Additionally, if you have the dark slide in the film back while the film back is on the camera, you will not be able to shoot. That is good because it prevents you from wasting film on blank shots. Lastly, this camera also supports a multiple exposure mode, which is cool if you're looking to get creative with double exposures. So let's talk about some of the components of this camera. To start, let's talk about the viewfinders. The viewfinders are fully interchangeable and actually have quite a few options to choose from. When I first bought my camera, it had a waist level viewfinder and I ended up selling that because I just didn't enjoy it that much. For portraits, I really enjoy using the eye level viewfinder as it allows me to move around a bit more comfortably. Currently, I own the cheapest viewfinder. It does not have any metering. However, there are a few options that do have metering so that you can do exposures automatically. The next component I'd love to talk about are the film backs. The film backs are one of the best qualities of this camera. They are fully interchangeable, so if you have multiple film backs, you can load different film and then replace it as needed. Additionally, they do sell some 35 millimeter film backs, which is fantastic. It allows you to use 35 millimeter film, which is much cheaper, but they actually also have a wide version of it as well that gives you a panorama look. You can consider it like a fake X-Pan. It's not as wide as the X-Pan, but it gets you pretty close. If you want to learn more about the wide film back, click on the card above to see my video about the almost X-Pan look you can achieve. This camera also supports quite a few different lenses. This camera was very popular and widely sold in the 80s, and so there are lots of lenses out there to choose from. Not only do you have various focal distances, but you also have a lot of different types of lenses as well, with some cheaper and some more expensive ones. I currently own the 50 millimeter and the 75 millimeter. That equates to a 35 and 50 when talking about a full frame camera. Although I haven't picked one up yet, there are some really long lens options as well. They range from 150 to 250 to even 500 millimeter. That's pretty cool for medium format. So would I recommend this camera? I definitely would. It's a workhorse camera and it has a lot of different options to choose from. If you pick one up, there's endless combinations you can create using all of the different modular pieces that are available. On top of that, if your camera breaks, there should be a lot of repair options as well, given that there's a lot of spare parts out there. This camera was manufactured quite a bit and so there are lots of different lenses and bodies and all kinds of different parts that you can source if need be. On top of that, it is just so easy to use and it's very comfortable too. I compare this camera to the Mamiya 645 1000S, which is much heavier and definitely a bit bulkier. That was my first medium format SLR. When I switched to this ETRS, it changed everything. The ETRS is lighter, it fits in the hand better, and it just feels a bit more modern. I do like antique cameras, but the modern feel of this camera really makes me comfortable. Additionally, for medium format shooters, you do save a bit of money on film here, given that you can squeeze out 15 shots from the rolls. If you shoot six by six or larger, then you're not gonna get as many photos on a roll of 120. I'd love to hear from you. Do you think this is a good alternative to the Hasselblad and Mamiya SLRs? Do you think you'd pick up an ETRS over those cameras? Is this one perhaps worth the price? Drop me a comment and we can discuss. All right, so that's what I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this review. I definitely really like this camera and I think if you pick one up, you'll be very happy with it as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and if you wanna see more videos like this about film photography, go ahead and subscribe. Peace.